Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA 5 video, I'm going to be telling you guys which career path is the best that you should choose when you enter the career builder on PS5 and Xbox Series X and S in GTA Online. So as you guys know, this is part of the update released exclusively for the current gen consoles. It's called the career builder. And essentially you receive $4 million to buy some properties, vehicles, weapons, and more to get you started. Now, the only problem with this is you only get one chance to do so, and you cannot change this. And if you reset your character, you'll lose everything you bought, and you'll be left with only the cash you brought with you to GTA Online, which is up to a million dollars. So what I want to do in this video today is give you an outline of each career path, and then ultimately which one I think is the best and the strategy that you should go with. Now in this video, I'm not gonna necessarily focus on like the individual vehicles you can buy. You guys can see that for yourself on the screen. There's no me need for me to say like, you know, this is a Bravado Banshee. This is how much it costs. You can clearly see that. So I wanna talk about sort of my own personal thoughts on each one. So for the executive, this career path is definitely the most active gameplay that you can get. It's also very focused towards solo players, which is quite nice. And there are two primary sources of income. You've got special cargo and vehicle cargo. And then a secondary source of income, which is going to be VIP work. Now, with $4 million at your hand, your priority should be to buy the cheapest office because location really does not matter. And you can do so for a million dollars with no upgrades. Now, you only need to buy a small or medium cargo warehouse, not a vehicle cargo warehouse. And even though the small warehouses are cheaper to buy, don't get tempted as you can make a lot more profit per crate by selling larger shipments of special cargo stuff. So select a medium warehouse of your choice. And then after that, you should have around $2 million left. So try and save the million by not buying the most expensive vehicles. The armored Karuma is probably gonna be one of your best bets. And then another car or another vehicle if you want. And that should be the rule as far as all of the career paths go, try and get as close to a million dollars that you can bring back to Los Santos. Don't just spend it all because you've got it there. You have to spend three million, but that doesn't mean you have to spend all four. So that's the executive branch. The next one is the nightclub one. And I will say this is essentially the worst path that you can choose. Now, this is the worst one because in order to make easy money from your nightclub, you actually need to own other businesses like bikers, the special cargo stuff, the hangar, gun running, etc. Because otherwise, without it, the only way to make money is by promoting the nightclub, which pays really poorly. You get about $1,500 to $4,000 based on mission lengths, and those are essentially pennies. They don't do much for you. And you do get a little bit of nightclub income in your safe if your popularity is high enough. But this is going to decrease with time, and you'll need to keep doing these missions in order to maintain the popularity. It really is an unnecessary grind without the other businesses established. So this one I would not recommend at all. The next one we're going to be talking about is the gun runner. And I would say that this is the most profitable passive business in the game and also very solo friendly. Now, in this business, your main goal is to produce weapons. So what I would recommend doing is buying the Chumash Bunker. It's located pretty close to the city, which is where you're going to be delivering weapons, and it's fairly cheap. So I'd recommend getting either Upgrade Pack A or D, as they both improve your manufacturing rate. And once you've completed the initial setup, you can then spend money to improve it even more. But it's better to save money for something we're going to talk about a little bit later on. Now, you can either buy supplies or steal them, and the former is suggested as you can do other activities to pay off for the supplies. Now, it does require a large capital investment, but once set up, you really don't have to worry as much. You simply buy a batch of supplies and come back after about two hours, and you have product ready to sell, and you can produce more, but after a certain capacity, you'll start to get more vehicles that make it harder to do with a limited amount of time and when you're by yourself because that means you'd have to sell more than one vehicle so if you're playing solo buy a batch of supplies come back after two hours sell it and sell missions usually only take 
around three to 10 minutes to complete. So it's a lot easier. Now, the last one is the biker business. And this is essentially a less profitable gun running business, but it requires a lower amount of money to get started. So in this business, your main goal is to produce illegal drugs with the exception of document forgery. So I would recommend buying the cheapest option for the clubhouse, which I think is a little under $400,000, and then buy the cocaine lockup at the Alamo C, which is just under a million dollars. Now, after the initial setup, you got to buy staff and equipment upgrades, and you'll be left with a little bit over $2.6 million. So enjoy buying vehicles and weapons, but just like all the other ones, don't spend so much that you're left with really less than a million at the end. And then just like the gun running business, you can either buy supplies or steal them. I would recommend stealing them because you can do other things to pay them off. However, production rate and capacity works different with the biker business. I would recommend buying a batch of supplies for 75000 come back after a little over an hour, and you should have product at either one or one and a half bars. I would sell it as soon as you get to 1.5 bars because just like with the gun running stuff, if you reach a certain capacity, you're going to get two or more vehicles, which does make it a little bit harder to do solo. So essentially the biker business, a little bit less profitable, but a lot less of an investment. So now that we know all those, which one is the recommended career path? Well, the answer here is the gun runner because the main aim of this entire thing is really just to help you to get the Kosatka as fast as possible. So not only is the gun running path the best option for making money, which is what I would recommend, but after you leave the tutorial, you're gonna have roughly a million dollars into your bank. And here's what I would honestly recommend doing next because we wanna get to the next phase, which is getting the Kosatka super fast so you can get straight into doing the Kayoparico heist, which is going to be the easiest way to make money. Now there's a couple of things you can do one, if you're a brand new player, if you end up setting up two-factor authentication and with Social Club, it'll get you $500,000. Then I would complete the hidden weapon challenges. You've got the Navy revolver. You've got the double action revolver. You've got the stone hatchet. Completing all three of these will get you $750,000. And now you should have enough to roughly buy the Kosatka. And then all you have to do is visit the music locker and you'll be able to start the Cayo Perico heist, which is, again, something you can do solo and something you can really rinse and repeat over and over and over again. So if I was ranking them, and again, this is just subjective, I would say you either want to choose the gun runner or the executive. If you really, really, really like the biker stuff, it's not bad. Like if you're just big into Sons of Anarchy and you just want to have a biker gang, that's what I would do. Don't do the nightclub stuff. Just don't. If you do the nightclub stuff, that's bad, everything terrible. You can eventually get a nightclub later on once you have some of these established. But for now, don't start with the nightclub stuff. That's just really, really bad. So long story short, there's only one bad path you can take. It's the nightclub stuff. The other paths are kind of your own personal preference and what you prefer. But at the end, it should all lead really to one goal, which is getting the Kosatka as fast as possible. So you can start completing the Cayo Perico heist, which is the easiest and most profitable heist that you can do solo, which is really going to get you jump started and making a ton of money in Grand Theft Auto Online. But I'd love to hear from you guys in those comments down below. Which career path did you end up taking if you chose the career builder here in Grand Theft Auto Online? I'd love to hear from you guys in those comments down below. So let me know what you're thinking down there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. You want to stay up to date on all the latest GTA and all the Rockstar Games videos that I'll be doing here on my channel. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work. And if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. And I'll see you guys in the next video.